Welcome everyone to Azure Kubernetes or AKS series. In this, we will be talking about how to create an AKS cluster in Azure using Azure portal. So let's see the portal experience. Probably the easiest way to create a new resource. So if I go into this portal.azure.com, and log in using my credential. And then what I can do, I can go ahead and create a resource. There are multiple ways by which you can start creating a resource. You can search Kubernetes service. If you select that, it shows you the Kubernetes service list of services. You can create a new service. If you say you want to create a new service, it will ask you to choose a resource group if you have any you can choose one or you can create a new one while creating the resource and then it also asks you what is the worker node virtual machine size you want to specify right so you can see that there are different configuration options available so you get to see that standard gives you ds2 v2 dev test gives you b4 ms cost optimized one and then there are a couple of other options available, right? So whichever you want to apply, go ahead and apply. So I would highly recommend that if you are doing a testing, just choose the dev test one and apply. Now you see what all features are missing in certain types of thing. For example, you do not get the Azure monitor, availability zones, etc. in the dev test type of uh, thing. So which is all, all right, right? And we can also Go ahead and say apply and it go, goes ahead and applies that the dev test kind of template and then it asks you to provide a cluster name so i can say aks wg so that's the name of the cluster it, um, it accepts and then gives you a green checkbox and then the region you want to deploy this so you can pick up the region which is near to you and availability zone is something which is not available in the dev test, but you can select the availability zone to make sure your cluster uh, worker node deployed in multiple different zones. And then you can select the Kubernetes version. So right now you can see that we are always most current uh, and the default one is bit uh, down the line. So you can always choose N minus two as your default one. A lot of company take that strategy of going a bit far so that they understand that it has all the problem which is solved, patch, updated, and then they test things in their dev test environment with the latest one. So you can choose the version out of these list of versions which are supported. So you can see the list of versions we support in AKS. So we'll go with the default one. And then the the standard uh, size size of the virtual machine, right? So uh, we have selected a specific template, but you can choose to change it later point in time. So I'll go with that one because that's a cost saving option. And then you can either go with a manual or auto scale. If you choose manual, then what is the maximum number of nodes you need? Since we are doing only testing, so I'll go with only two nodes. The next one is the node pool. Node pool is set up a virtual machine. You can see that it picks up the Linux as the default node pool. However, if you want to pick a, create a node pool for Windows, uh, you can select a Windows and then deploy your legacy Windows application in the, in the Kubernetes cluster. So that also is supported. And then uh, the virtual node is a concept which uses Azure Container Instance or ACI. What it essentially does is it does scale your Kubernetes to the Azure Container Instances, which is a serverless activity, which means that you don't allocate a specific size for VM for your worker node. You say that you keep on creating parts and they'll be deployed using the Azure Container Instances running as a separate service and connecting that. So that is something what we call as virtual nodes. You can enable that. Uh, you just need to Say authentication, uh, what kind of authentication do you need? So do you need a service principle or a system managed identity? If you want to um, enable the Azure Active Directory, you can also do that 
and you can uh, say that what is the group you want to give access to etc so i'm not going to do it but you can always um, configure the cluster access with an active directory user authentication and then your encryption so we'll just go with the default one and this is important the networking the kubernetes uses some sort of internal networking mechanism to allocate IP addresses, etc., to the pod and to the class nodes it creates. So you're going to use the kubenet, that's the default one, or Azure CNI. So if you choose Azure CNI, you need to have the Azure virtual network pre created, or you can create it while creating the IKS cluster. And then you can give the, the IP address range, etc., and then give all the information like what is the Docker bridge, right? That's the IP address for the Docker bridge, DNS prefix etc so we'll go with the cube net uh, that's a simple one but you can always go ahead with the configuration which i demonstrated over here and the dns prefix would look like this right that's the dns prefix and then the load balancer is standard um, you can also enable the http routing that way you will have an http endpoint created for your services and if you choose uh, any network policy which is basically uh, the the third party solution you can either use calico or azure so azure is only available it's right now grayed out it's only available when you select the azure cni right we can select calico that's a third party uh, solution to enable the network policy if you have any azure container registry and you want to associate that so that you if you have a private uh, images you want to bring that into your aks cluster you don't need to authenticate uh, create a secret that's a docker registry secret and then associate that as part of your pod creation process so you can automatically download them because they are kind of uh, uh, known to each other and then you have a container monitoring which is disabled by default we can enable it but since we selected the dev test uh, this will not be working with um, with this kind of environment so if you need go ahead with the higher ask you will not change anything over here and then we'll say create if you start creating it will do all the validation and that uh, incorporates my um, authorization things whether i have all the rights to do everything whether these resources are available in those regions um, what i selected uh, does match with all the conditions if else etc so it does all those validation it doesn't create the resource at this moment it does go ahead and check the validity of um, me uh, as an user logged into this Azure subscription is eligible to create this. When this green checkbox comes, you are okay to go ahead, but you can always review and change it. At this stage, you can see what all you have selected, and then you say create. Now, it will kickstart the, the cluster creation process. At the background, it will do a lot more things. It'll spin up um, a control plane and then it will install all the kubernetes components it'll install uh, create a node pool have the virtual machines in the node pool attach them as a worker node run those um, command to basically connect those virtual machine as a worker node pool in the kubernetes system so that's all step-by-step -step activity if you have done kubernetes setting by yourself in a typical virtual environment or a non-cloud environment you know the steps you need to take to make sure that you can create a cluster and there's a bunch of things you need to do to make sure that it works in a production kind of scenario all those heavy lifting is being taken care of over here in this process now it takes few moments few minutes to create that while it is getting created what we can do we can basically go ahead and use this um, pre-created cluster to see what all it has done right so we'll come back to this when it is done but if you notice here that we are basically having a cluster created right inside this resource group called aks2 right that's what i just now have created in this morning and you can see that it is using the version number 1.20.9 it's in central us it is succeeded and it is running state you can stop it but it's right now running state and then it also gives you a couple of additional information about the node pool so you have a one node pool 
node size is standard ds2 v2 um, and the kubernetes version and then it also talks about the networking details what is the pod cidr so when you create a pod you basically get the the ip address added to the pod each of these pods so what is the range of ip address from which the pod will get uh, their own private ip address so the dns ip and the docker bridge cidr is this one and then the network policy is calico and the load balancer is standard right and you can see a couple of additional information over here in fact it also gives you a bit of uh, monitoring capability right now it talks about what is the node pool cpu usage uh, and all these things so if you see that uh, all the resources are being utilized at maximum capacity then you might need to consider uh, scaling it out uh, if you enable the auto scale then it will be taken care of. but if that say reaches the capacity you can always go ahead with that now you have the additional capabilities right so you can see that as your monitor is configured Azure policy is not yet configured, so you see it's now giving an option to configure it. You can go ahead and configure it. Auto scaling is configured. So this auto scaling is the cluster level auto scaling. It's not your pod level auto scaling. So just to make sure that you know the differences of the auto scaling, because Kubernetes does this pod auto scaling. There is auto scaler object available, but we're not talking about that. We are talking about the hardware or the or the infrastructure auto scaling for the Kubernetes runtime. And then there are certain recommendations you might find when you start using it and then the tutorial is definitely a helpful way to really see how you can uh, deploy certain things there are a nice set of videos by people like brendan burns people like donovan right so this you can all watch those videos and then learn from their their experiences and the knowledge so the great guys uh, they are basically helping community to learn more and more on Azure and specific things within the Azure. Now, you know, AKS does come with this dashboarding capability. So you have a lot of other options, but let's see how we can connect to this cluster. Okay, so this is the first time I'm trying to do this. So if you click on the connect option, right, you, it gives you a couple of things. It gives you an ability to set the uh, account. So you copy the AZ CLI command. You can use the AZ CLI from anywhere. You can run it from the browser. So that's what I'm running. So if you are in an Azure portal and see this nice little cloud shell icon, you click on that, you, it opens in the browser like this. You can also open shell.azure.com and this opens in the browser. You need to log in, definitely. So after you log in, you just paste the uh, command you copied from here. So I'll just copy and then paste it. Now what happens? does go go ahead and uh, set the subscription if you have multiple subscription access it will be defaulted to the subscription you are currently in and then the az aks get credential will get you the details of this um, aks cluster and will set things in the dot cube slash config file now what exactly is happening it is bringing in all the certificate details into your local machine in this case it's the cloud shell and then cloud shell also comes with a lot more tools so cube cuddle is one of the tools which is pre-loaded already so you should see the cube cuddle version now it will talk about what version of the cube cuddle is it's running so it's running the latest version which is absolutely fine with us to work with now if you want to let's say um, think about um, connecting to this cluster which is already done the step one is to bring the credential that is az aks um, a get credential so we ran that command and then we get the credential and it's it's done already now what i need to do is that we need to run the cube cuttle get nodes if you do that it'll show you the list list of nodes which you can access right and then uh, things will be deployed over there so this we're using node pool so you can see the three node pool has been created so three uh, nodes are, are connected now if you want to uh, create a pod just to test so, so it might so happen that um, you might not have any pod here by in the default namespace because this is a brand new uh, aks cluster to create a, a new pod so you can say kubectl run uh, 
pod one and then image nginx so we'll use the famous nginx image to create the pod and it's pretty quick so you can see that pod is created and it is uh, saying container creating if you run again it, you will see that it's now in the running state that means the pod is created um, and the kubernetes cluster is working i can create a pod in my kubernetes cluster where i can see things um, um, by running few command so what i have done is that i have created a kubernetes cluster using azure portal i have seen many different components in the portal i can browse through the portal it's a pretty intuitive so you can actually go through the whole list of things and then learn what they are trying to do but in a nutshell your cluster is ready without you knowing a lot more about um, the uh, kubernetes administration we don't need to be a kubernetes administration uh, administrator to be able to work on kubernetes so we if you are a developer just focusing towards your application code you focus on that you deploy test in the aks you don't need to worry too much about the kubernetes part but you definitely need to know what you are doing right for example what is pod what is container etc so those basics are important but it is not so important for you to know how to configure the kubernetes cluster and install it by yourself the installing is fully automated and that's our world is moving towards right fully automated uh, way and then you take the whole pain of building the application with all the business requirements focus everything towards that and deploy everything over here hope you enjoyed this discussion and thank you very much for watching